Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I am Brett Papa, and today is all about freaking Robin Trower. And if you don't know who Robin Trower is, do yourself a favor, stop, go to iTunes or wherever you buy music, and buy like the first three or four albums. Especially if you're a fan of Hendrix, freaking Trower is so good and some of the live albums ah oh, playing is amazing all right so if you like the video make sure to share it subscribe and click the bell all that stuff down there check it out and then also down in the description box there's always a video series on how to solo better or there's all kinds of stuff and if you have any song ideas or subscriptions let me know in the thing below <laughs> Okay, so the song, you're basically going to be playing a lot out of C-sharp minor pentatonic. Okay, and then you're going to do a C-sharp minor chord down here, but you're also going to catch the fourth fret E. Is this cool sound? All right. And then we're going to be playing a G major chord. And then a B major. Now in the kind of pre-chorus or chorusy part, there's an A major as well. Okay? So in this beginning part, you're basically playing out of this minor, C sharp minor. Okay? Now what we do is we go to the ninth fret. And I, you know, sometimes I, I'll pick these, like with my, pluck these, I should say, with my finger. Okay, so we're gonna go nine, and then we're gonna go to the B string, 10th fret, stay on the ninth fret. These are all double stops. And then, okay, so that last one is a hammer and pull. Kind of tricky to get both of those going to where you don't mute out one of the other strings, so make sure you're right on your fingertips. All right, so you got. Okay, and you notice how I release the pressure because I want to choke off those notes a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to go into basically where I'm going to be outlining this C sharp minor chord. And then. So you go to the root, which is on the 11th fret. And then, okay, so that's going to be D string, 9 to 11. And then you're basically coming back up this chord. Right? So that's 9, B, 9, G. So really slowly, all together you got. And now. Now the next part, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to do a double step on the D and the G, and then you're going to slide down. Okay, so that's going to be D and G, ninth fret, and then we're going to hammer on to the 11th fret D. All right. And then I'm going to go and catch the 11th fret. A, and I'm going to slide down. So we got. And you want to carry this note down and try to get it to where you can slide all the way into that next chord. Okay, so what I do is as I'm sliding down, I'm getting this finger ready and I know that due to this chord having that extra note in the bass, I can just put my first finger and just kind of plant it all across this whole fourth fret. So right now, I'm gonna slide and get this finger ready. Now the cool thing is, this next chord is kind of a spread. Okay, so that gives you time to hit this note, this note, before you need to get the other notes of basically this C sharp minor chord down here with the G sharp and the bass. Okay. All right. So you got. And then. Okay. 
okay? Now spread through that chord. And what I mean is one note at a time, not it's okay. Now the next part, super cool lick, right? So remember, you're playing out of the C sharp minor chord, and you're basically going to be utilizing the notes from this chord to make this next killer lick. Okay, so you bar the B and E strings, and then you hammer on and pull off to the fifth fret of the B string. Okay, so. Much like this lick down here, right? It's almost the exact same thing. You're gonna, and then roll this finger over to the G fourth fret. Okay, and then you're gonna hammer on to the G sixth fret. So you got, and then we're gonna go backwards, just like we did down here, right? Same exact kind of move. And then this is where we're gonna go catch that G. Okay, so you're gonna go down a G major chord, one string at a time, starting with the E. And then we're gonna hammer on to the third of the chord, right? So what that means is the third of the chord is what makes the chord major or minor. If I were to put it here at the third fret, that would be a minor chord. But I wanna hammer on. Okay, and so make sure you pick that note so you get a nice clean hammer on. Now we hit the B, third fret. Okay, and then I'm gonna go right back up to the E and do a slide. Okay, and that's gonna be five to seven. So the whole thing is. And then catch the fifth fret of the A. And then we're gonna go down and catch seven to nine on the D, so. Now this first slide is two notes, right? So. And then this one is like, you're going from two notes, right? You're going from here to here, but you want more of a quick slide. So you got. See how this one's. Take my time. And then slide right into that one. And then you do a hammer on and pull off. So. And then we're going to go here to the B major chord and do the exact same thing we did down here. Okay. So same move on the third. And then. Okay, now that move is nine to 11 on the A. And then that hammer on and pull off thing we did, you're gonna do it again. Ninth fret on the D and the G, and then you're hammering on and pulling off of the D string. And then you slide. Okay, so. Okay, and then you, see how I slide off this way, and then I catch the B note and slide off, so. And then you let it go. Okay, so, as long as that took to explain that, that thing keeps happening over and over again in the song. That's all the verses have that shape. The only difference is the little lick that starts off the verse, right? So in the beginning, we had. Right? And then you go through the whole thing. Okay, now, since it's the second verse, you have a different little intro, but the rest is gonna be the same. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go nine and 10 and just slide back and forth. You go up to 11 and 12. So nine and 10 to 11 and 12, it's a whole step. Back and forth twice. And then. Okay, so that is gonna be the D string and the G string, ninth fret. Hit it twice and then slide. And then keep that pressure on the finger because you're gonna slide down. Remember, we slide into that chord every single time. So you wanna keep the pressure on there. It's not as easy as it sounds. It takes a little bit to get used to it, but it makes a big difference in the feel, right? And then back to the same thing. Okay, so the next one, you just hang on this, right? So this is verse three, I think. Just hang on this note, or these notes. So it's nine and 10, right? Then the next part is gonna be 11 and nine. So D11, G9, All right? So it's, you hit that twice. And then the next one is gonna be a hammer on the A, nine to 11, but you want that D9 ringing too. And it's a quick hammer, it's not, it's, right? So there's a difference. So you got. Okay, one more time. And this, you're gonna kind of release the pressure and then slide all the way down. So that's. Same thing at the end of every verse. Okay. So, the next part. So. Right, this is where it gets into the chorus. So you're gonna start on nine and 10, G and B. And then do some mutes, right? And then go. All right, so. Right, so it's okay, so it's so that's and then okay, so next part is going to be going into the chorus, right? So you got. Or, right? You can hammer or you can pick it. The important part is the timing. It's a quick punch and then two mutes over here. Now, what you can do is put your palm down over here and mute, or you can take the pressure off of this hand and mute, or you can do both, right? Okay, so that's gonna be nine and 10. Nine and nine, right? Okay, so one more time. Okay, now we're gonna slide down to a different chord. It's gonna be the exact same style, right? Same kind of thing. All right, but it's gonna differ in one aspect, right? So now you're down to an F sharp major chord, second fret. Let that ring. The next part, you're gonna redo this hammer, but then you let 
the open strings ring out and it's super cool sounding. Okay, so that's gonna be two to three. Back to G, just how we normally do it. Now this is tricky. This is where I'm actually gonna use my thumb and do kind of a Hendrix style. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the root note with my thumb. The, the thing with the thumb, a lot of people have a really hard time with the thumb. I'm gonna give you one tip of the thumb <laughs> on this one. Don't try to go flat with your thumb, okay? A lot of people, the mistake they make is they try to go flat and they're like, I can't get my fingers to do it. You wanna be on the side of your thumb, right? More like this part right here instead of this part right here. So I'm kind of on the angle and that allows my wrist to tweak back this way. And now I can have my hand in a nice spot. See, if I try to keep it flat, it really inhibits what my fingers can do. So try it on the side. I don't have huge hands and it makes it a lot easier to do it this way. Maybe if you got giant you know, mitts, you can do it like this flat. I don't, so try on the side. Now this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hammer on and make the chord suspended. So, thumb, and then D7, six, five, okay? And this isn't, it's, a quick hammer on and you're going from G6 to G7. Okay, the next part is I'm gonna come down here with my first finger and I'm gonna get the D and G strings fifth fret and hammer on from the minor third to the major third. So. And then I'm going to go back to that normal shape, right? So we got. And then. End it the same way. Okay. So. The little licks in between each verse, right? That's the first one, right? That's the intro of the song. And then. Right? Next one is. that gets you into the verse, then it's. And then the one that gets you into the chorus. Down to F sharp. Let's get into the next round. Okay, so one of the things I forgot before we get into the solo is, you know, a lot of these guys back in the day, they used fuzz, right? And so this whole time, I've had my fuzz pedal and my funky vibe. Freaking awesome, awesome, awesome univibe kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to butcher the guy's name, but it's Sabadeus, I think, Funky Vibe. And I have the 69 version, and it sounds so freaking good. And so I have mine set volume at about seven, the intensity at about three, and the speed at about six, and it's gonna vary from univibe to univibe, but that's really important in this sound, right? And then I also am running into my Friedman small box. Just set on, you know, basic, here's what it sounds like on its own. So. 
a little bit of grit. Now the next part is the important part and that's the fuzz. So check this out. My fuzz is set pretty good. It's really important that you have a little bit of dirt on your amp because think about it, back in the day, all these guys cranked their freaking Marshalls and they had a little bit of gain on it and you get that back end kind of tube distortion anyways, right? So there's always just a hair of gain on it. But the really important part is to get your fuzz set like you would for lead, right? And it, depending on who makes the fuzz, you're gonna have to experiment with where you put it in the chain. A lot of fuzzes like being right in the front. This XTS fuzz, Iridium fuzz that I have, which is my favorite fuzz ever, it's so freaking good. Um, can be placed wherever it's it's they they have all that kind of stuff worked out and so i love it because i can put that fuzz wherever i want but in this case it's behind the vibe so it goes guitar vibe fuzz pedal now check this out in the beginning all i'm doing to get that clean tone is i'm taking this and just rolling it down to about eight on my guitar's volume and just picking really light okay because you can hear when the solo comes in which we're going to get into right now you can hear that he just rolls up his volume knob and slides in <laughs> Okay, now the solo, he's got one of my favorite vibratos. It's really wide though, so that's really a lot of the sound is that really <laughs> Hendrix too, right? They both had a really wide vibrato. Now typically I will take for vibrato and use your thumb as like a pivot point, right? So it's from the wrist going like this right? It's not from your finger doing this. So if you're new to vibrato, don't think of it as like you got to move your finger really fast. That'll produce like a pretty inconsistent vibrato. What you want is you want to use your wrist and your forearm rocking back and forth and that gives you a lot of strength and then you can use the thumb as a pivot point, right? So it just goes... <laughs> Now, a lot of people like to bend up on this one, or some people like to bend down. Cool thing about the third string is you're not going to run out of room either way, so experiment with that, because a lot of the solo is going to be on the D and the G strings, so you can use your vibrato down or up, whatever you want to do. All right, so the beginning riff is just like we did in the intro. You're going to slide to that... 11 and 12, you're gonna hold there for a minute. And then, okay, so you, this time you slide in, but you hold it. And then, okay, one more time. Now the next part, you're gonna grab the root note or the C sharp here on the 11th fret of the D. And then you're going to go 9 to 11 on the G. Big vibrato. So it's... Actually, it goes... Sorry. And then... Okay, so... Now, the next part is on the D, and you're going to be doing some bending on the D. Okay, so the first one... Wide vibrato, hold it a little bit, and then slide off. Now this is going to slide all around, all right? So that's going to go from 9, 11, down to 6, back up to 12. And then, all right? Wide vibrato again. So you got... And then that one you hold longer. And then 
You're gonna bend into that note from the ninth fret, like a half step. Okay, so. Release, right, so. Pull off, and then. Wide vibrato. All right, so that whole part. And then. Okay, and the next part, you're going to bend up on G9. Right, total Chuck Berry style lick. Okay, so we're gonna go nine, full, seven, seven. And then you're gonna pull off 10 to seven. All right, and then. All right, now. That gets you into the second round, very similar, but this beginning lick. Super cool lick, a little tricky. And that's what I love about his playing, by the way. He's got some really killer pentatonic style playing. So if you're a fan of, you know, blues bass, like Hendrix sounding soloing, his stuff is killer. Check out the live albums again. He solos for like five or 10 minutes, but you can, pick up some killer phrasing because it's not that fast. So if you're really into this style, I really suggest you go and you explore some of his playing because he's not too quick. So it's accessible and then you just got to work on the feel, right? So round two. Now. Okay, so that first part is nine to 11 back to nine. And then you're gonna go same kind of thing, but now you're gonna go 11, 13. All right, so. So. One more time. So that's the first part. Now you're going to skip over a string. Okay, so that's going to be 9 to 11 on the A. And then, and then slide up to 11. All right, so the whole thing. Sorry, when you slow it down, sometimes the slides, they don't work. It's like, squawk, 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 squawk. All right, so it's. One more time, I messed up. Wide vibrato again. And then same thing. Um, this time, that lick is very similar. But this time you just slide to the ninth fret. All right, so it's 9, 11, 9, 12. All right, so. Now this one, you're gonna do a cool bend on the 10th fret. And then. All right, so. And then seven, ten, seven, and then bend up on nine. And then it goes back into the chorus. You gotta roll your volume back down, all right? So, solo. All 
Let's see, sorry. <laughs> I swear, you learn a song, you forget it, you get on the spot, you got a couple cameras looking at you, you're like, oh God, what am I gonna do? No, I'm just kidding. So that is the whole first part of the song, right? We're gonna do part two, where we're gonna examine the next round of verses, but also there's a wicked outro solo, but that's gonna take like 27 years to do. So, get part one down. Again, I highly suggest you buy the song and you practice to it, because the feel is so good, and you really gotta spend some time. You remember like when I'm... Get those notes ringing, right? Right, and then the sliding down. Really listen to it because that's a lot of the magic, right? Is the feel that they add, how long they hold on to notes when they slide in and out of stuff. And so all those, you know, total nuances, listen to it while you're learning it so that you can start to develop that style. Because like I said, he's got one of the best feels around. I'm gonna do a ton of Trower stuff. If you guys wanna see some other Trower stuff or Hendrix or song requests, let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's always something in the description box. If you like the video, please, by all means, share it to the world. And then don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, and also check out brettpapa.com where I teach you how to do all this kind of stuff and have soloing and rhythm guitar make sense. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.